Instagram.com. Since man has existed on this planet, he's interacted with the sun in a very broad spectrum of light. Visible light, which you can see here, and also invisible light, specifically ultraviolet light and infrared light. Specifically, ultraviolet light B, which produces vitamin D in the skin, and also infrared light, which is now being shown scientifically to have benefits in the human body. We now know that infrared light can penetrate deeply into the human body and affect metabolic changes that are mitigated by the mitochondrion. As you can see here, Robert Fosbury's hand covering an infrared light source, but light still being picked up on the other side by an infrared camera. As you can see here with this yellow line on the graph, light from the sun has a very broad spectrum, and man enjoyed that spectrum even up until the late 1800s, and even through the invention of the incandescent light bulb. As you can see here with this blue line on the graph, that is the spectrum of light that comes from an incandescent light bulb. Recent changes in the United States and in other places around the world have called for the production of LED bulbs. These bulbs are more efficient because they produce no light in the infrared spectrum. This is considered, quote, wasted light since we cannot see it. As you can see, all of the light that an LED bulb produces is in the visible spectrum. And so for the first time on Earth, what we're seeing is light that's coming into the eyes without any accompanying infrared light. What you may not know is that there are currently rules in place that will become effective in 2028, which will make this even more exaggerated. I'm Dr. Roger Schwelt with MedCram, and today we're going to discuss exactly what that new rule is and the effect that it will have on the light bulbs that you can buy and how that will affect your health. As we've talked about many times, the spectrum of light that is coming from the sun is very broad. And in fact, if you were to look at this, it's actually much higher than is shown here on this graph. So in fact, the best thing to do for your health is to actually get outside. The problem is, is that we spend 93% of our time inside, so it's not unreasonable to actually look for a bulb that is healthy. The issues with the current LED bulbs is that there is more blue light than you would expect to see, for instance, in an incandescent bulb. And the other issue is, is that there is no infrared light that you would normally expect with a regular incandescent bulb. In fact, all of the output on an LED bulb is concentrated within the visible spectrum. This is how it's made to be more, quote, efficient. Even though we associate with efficiency something that's doing the same job but requiring less energy. Here, it's debatable whether or not LEDs are actually doing the same job. In fact, as of late, there's been a number of articles that have been written and scientific studies that have investigated this issue with LED bulbs and their effect on the human body. Part of the issue is how we define efficiency and how it's defined in the Department of Energy in the United States. The Department of Energy regulates light bulbs and specifically GSLs, which this is one of. It's a general service lamp, and these are the type of bulbs that you would buy at a home improvement store in the terms of lumens per watt. In other words, how bright is the bulb based on the amount of power that's going into the bulb? And as it turns out, lumens are actually a measurement of primarily green and yellow light. And that is concentrated here in the middle of the visible spectrum. All of this other wavelengths that come out of a light-emitting device, potentially, such as an incandescent bulb or even the sun, is considered to be wasted because it does not contribute to lumens. This measurement of lumens, which was actually standardized in 1924, is the standard that we're currently using to measure efficiency in our light bulb. So watts go in and lumens come out. If you want to improve the efficiency of a bulb, all you need to do is sacrifice some of these wavelengths on the outsides so that you get more efficiency here in the middle. To understand what's happened, we have to look at the history of the energy regulations in the Department of Energy. And for this history, I'd like to thank Dr. Martin Moore Eid for summarizing this and helping with this presentation. In 2007, the Energy Independence and Security Act, which was passed by Congress, established a backstop requirement for general service lamps. These are basically the bulbs that you buy for your home. 
to meet a minimum of 45 lumens per watt. Now that's an important number because a regular incandescent bulb has an efficiency of only about 10 to 15 lumens per watt because much of that energy goes out into the infrared spectrum. And so to meet that range of 45 lumens per watt, much of that output in the infrared spectrum had to be sacrificed. As it says here, this effectively banned most incandescent and halogen light bulbs that fit normal lamp sockets widely available in homes. After this legislation was passed, there was a number of years that were taken up in the Department of Energy looking at rulemaking so that this could actually be enforced. And in April of 2022, the Department of Energy had the final rules that came out that essentially banned the sale of general service lamps that produce less than 45 lumens per watt. And that effectively banned the sale of new incandescent bulbs after July of 2023. As high as that 45 lumens per watt was, it still allowed bulb makers to manipulate and to move around the requirements so that it could meet the 45 lumen per watt here in the yellow to green area, but still allow some other wavelengths, specifically here into the reds and then sometimes even into the blues. And there have been a number of companies that have actually capitalized on that ability. I have no ties to any of the companies that I'm mentioning today. I'm just showing you an example. For instance, there's a company called Chorus, which has made bulbs that, depending on the time of day, can have maximum blue light in the morning, which is beneficial for cortisol production, but minimal in terms of blue light in the evening when you want to minimize the stimulation of retinal ganglion cells that would shut down melatonin production. And you can see there's other types of lights that they can do inside of that visible spectrum. There's also a company called Nera, which, as you can see, takes these LED bulbs, which have a very limited spectrum here in the visible spectrum. And then what it does is it puts a filament into the bulb that produces infrared light across this spectrum, which then is able to simulate more closely that of sunlight spectrum. And these bulbs still make it within the 45 lumen per watt standard. There's also another company called Phosphortech, which coats the bulb, or you can actually use a shade around any type of bulb because it will take the light from the blue spectrum here, use photochemical reactions in the coating to convert it into deep red and even infrared light so that it would simulate a sunset. As a result of this, we've seen an increase, dramatic increase, in the amount of LED bulbs that are now in homes, from 4% to 47%. And well, as we've mentioned, things are going to get worse, because there's currently a rule that has already been put in place that in July of 2028, there will be an increase once again in the floor of the efficiency standards. This was in April of 2024. The DOE published a new final rule, and you can see the final rule here. I will give you a link to it in the description below. And basically what it does is it raises that 45 lumen per watt minimum standard to now 125 lumens per watt. And it depends on the bulb that we're talking about, but depending on which bulb it is that we're talking about, as you can see here, this is published from the rule. It can be, as it says here, 124.6, 115.7, 96, 92.3, and so forth. And you can see here that these are all well above 45 lumens per watt. And so what that essentially means is that they're going to have to sacrifice even more natural wavelengths that they would normally have in this bulb to squeeze it to get more lumens out of it given the same amount of watts. So the question is, is why would they do that? The reason why they would do that is they want to get more efficiency because they believe that the more efficient light bulbs are, the less energy that has to be produced. And the less energy that has to be produced, the less greenhouse gases will be produced and the less pollution. In fact, in their cost analysis of this, they predicted that there would be money saved they actually calculated that there would be health benefits. And those health benefits were from less and less particulate matters like PM 2.5, which is the amount of fine particles in the air that can cause disease. 
And so when they looked at consumer operating cost savings and climate benefits and health benefits, the total that they came to here was $2.2 billion annually. However, they didn't take any consideration looking at the health disorders impact by electrical lights at night and the fact that it would not be circadian friendly. And so when you look at sleep disruption, obesity, diabetes, cardiovascular disease, breast cancer, seasonal influenza, prostate cancer, and psychiatric illness, it was dwarfed by the cost of all of these things, totaling $3.5 trillion. The $2 billion in savings annually is completely dwarfed even if you just look at circadian rhythm sleep-wake disorders, which we know is about $411 billion per year. So again, to look at this, we used to have the incandescent light bulb right here. And then the 45 lumen per watt rule came in in 2023, essentially outlawing that. And so now we have our LED bulbs in our homes, and some of these can actually be beneficial. In other words, we can add things to them to make them more beneficial. Instead of calling it a general service lamp, we could call it a general wellness lamp. However, in 2028, the rule will go into effect making it 125 lumens per watt rule, which will essentially outlaw even those. And what kind of a bulb are we going to be talking about here? We're talking about an unhealthy narrow-spectrum blue-chip white LED GSL that will be available. Because in 2023, the 45 lumen per watt rule outlawed incandescence and halogen light bulbs. And in 2028, the rule that's in place now will go into effect, which is 125 lumens per watt. And you will see an elimination of red light bulbs for nighttime use to protect melatonin and sleep, an elimination of light bulbs that also provide bacterial decontamination, and an outlawing of light bulbs that provide healthy infrared as well as visible light, and an outlawing of zero blue light bulbs using violet LED chips to protect circadian rhythms at night, and also the elimination of broad spectrum LED light bulbs that mimic natural daylight spectrum. And so simply because the Department of Energy did not take into consideration the biological consequences of its actions, the public is going to be exposed to excess blue light at the wrong time, and it eliminates 90% of the solar spectrum from our indoor spaces, which unfortunately we spend 93% of our lives inside. And why, again, I say regardless of what bulb you put into your home, you really ought to be getting outside where near-infrared light abounds. So what are the solutions? What can we do? The only way we can get around this new rule in 2028 that's going in July would be new legislation that quashes it, basically. And it would require 60 votes in the Senate to do that. Another potential possibility is the creation of a new classification of bulb called a general wellness lamp. So currently, this new rule in 2028 is simply regulating all of those things that we consider as a general service lamp. However, if we were to make a new classification of something like a general wellness lamp, something that would be not under these regulations but would be giving off infrared light, it's possible that we could create new standards for that classification. The person that you want to write to is Secretary Chris Wright, who is the Secretary of the U.S. Department of Energy. All of this is in his department. It would also be helpful to write to your member of Congress. And please check the description below for further information about what we should be doing. I believe that not many people know about this and this information needs to get out. So I would ask you to share this video with as many people as possible so that they can be educated. This is something that's very important, has a big impact on not only our health, but everyone else's health. Thanks for joining us.